Mario, is your life in danger? Are people still trying to kill you? Yes, even after, after this experience, so many times they tried to kill me. And at the end, my parents, you know, um, they did a mock uh, funeral ceremony. You know what it is? It's uh, like um, outcasting, keeping you out. You know what they did? They made my statue and buried in a grave and they wrote my birth date and death date. They wrote the original birth date, but the death date to the day when I became Christian, when I took the baptism. So that is the death day for them and they buried. So in my hometown, I have my own grave, you know. One of my friends, uh, a Christian friend, when he passed that way, he took the photo of that grave and sent it to me. That's how I know that I have a grave. So thereafter, no contact with my, with my sisters, whom I love so much. My mom, I really love her, but no hope. I can, I, humanly speaking, no hope. God can touch them within a moment. So I'm praying. And even if they did not accept Christianity, I am always saying, Jesus, please take them to heaven. Where I am, I need them. So that's my prayer always. Yeah. And you're not afraid to die? Never, never. <laughs> no, never. No, they said we are. The fear of death is actually a foolishness. You know why? All those who are born should die one day. Hundred percent, all have to die. You have to die. All have to die. Whether you fear or you don't fear, you have to die. It's a fact. And I will say that is the only assurant thing which you will attain on earth. Now, when I am talking to you, I am not sure whether this will be broadcasted because anything can happen. I am not sure whether I will have tonight my dinner. I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether I'll be back to India. I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether my children studies very well and get the certificate. I'm not sure of anything, anything. The only thing which is surest to me on earth is that I will die. All other things are unsurest thing and you are trying. Something is happening, something not happening. But it is unsurest, it's not sure. The only thing which is surest on earth is death. So never fear death. You must be sure that it is going to come one day. Then what you can do is, you can think like this. If you believe in Muhammad and I, you know what will be your situation? Prophet Muhammad died, people buried, and afterwards we don't know where he went. If I believe in him and I, I don't know where I will go. Gautam Buddha, Mahavira, Guru Nanaka, Shirdi, Babi, Kali, Muruga, Basuna, Vamana, so many gods and goddesses in my country, in India. All have lived, created history, they died, people buried, and they were, we don't know where they went. So if I believe in all these gods and goddesses, I don't know what's my future. But Christ, who died, but he came back. So I have a hope, if I die in Christ, I can come back. So it is better, be sure of death, and that should be in Christ. Because Jesus very clearly said, I am going to my father's house. Romans, uh, sorry, John chapter 14, verse 3. I am going to my father's house, there are so many rooms. And I will arrange a room for you, then I will come back to take you. So, you know, I'm so happy to know that my Jesus is arranging big bungalow for me there, big house. Once if he finished the work, he will come back to take me. I think it is a big bungalow because last 18 years, Muslims tried to kill me, they could not kill, which means still the construction is going on. Once if it is ready, then he will come back to take me. Then only the Muslims can kill me. Till then, nobody can. So I'm not afraid of death, because that is a fact. Only thing I'm thinking after my death, what? To have eternal life, you need Jesus. And not only that, you need Catholic Church. I will specifically say that because uh, my faith is every religion says the block between God and man is sin. And in Islam, for the sin, they are offering animal. For their sin, they are sacrificing animal. In Hinduism, next birth, next birth. But only in Christianity, Jesus himself took my sin and my punishment and he removed this sin from me and he made me pure and he can surrender me to God and the father saying that he is pure and I have purified I have taken out all his transgression, his punishment and his sins so now you can take him to heaven so Jesus is my savior, he is a perfect man because I am man, my savior should be a man and he is perfect to God because I need eternal life only God can give eternal life and it's very simple to tell you the consequences of sin is death. The consequences of sin is death. So 
to remove the death what you sh must should do to remove the darkness you must bring light the same way to remove the death you must bring life whose life in the old testament they were giving the life of animal because they believed the uh, life in blood and animal blood and muslims are doing even now but to remove my death i need eternal life from where i can get eternal life only from god and that is given by jesus on the cross so when i partake in his body and in his blood i am partaking in his life i am becoming part of his life so then i that's why jesus calls me brother and I, we jesus and me both calls god daddy you know it's uh, it's a union in god and we are we are attaining eternal life so to receive this uh, always you must be a catholic because jesus clearly said if you eat my body if you drink my blood you shall never die even if you die i will raise you so that's how i decided to become christian especially a catholic okay now i have a question your life is in danger you're here in europe taking a huge risk by sharing your testimony with others what do you think about the people here in europe who are baptized but who don't practice their faith what would you say to them this that's the reason there are two problems one is that uh, we are very weak in educating our children in faith we are very weak and that weakness originated in us we were speaking lot of freedom for human beings so when the when we give lot of freedom which is not permitted by god this is happened for example uh, the gay marriages or uh, fetus killing or uh, abortion you know or the alcohol or drugs everything is legalized in all the countries now almost everywhere so when it is legalized nobody has the right to question anyone even the parents doesn't have the right to question the children so this human freedom is the real problem to come out of faith and the second thing in this freedom the parents are unable to tell children to go for catechism but in islam since uh, it's a political religion it's islam the beauty of islam is islam is a religion and it is a politics so it's a political religion so islam tried to control the islamic world with sharia law so it is forcibly asking the children to attend uh, the catechism so from childhood onwards they are training with real catechism so they have lot of fanatic faith i say we we must respect the human being we must give full freedom for the human being at the same time from childhood we must try to educate catholicism to our children if it can then definitely the european world will change you know uh, two days before i was praying for europe after reaching here at midnight i was praying and asked the lord what's a message to the europe especially to the spain and i received a message that was john chapter sorry the revelation chapter 2 verses 2 to 4 god himself says i know how hard work you did for me god mm -hmm. says to spain spain did lot of hard work for the Jesus, for the name of Jesus and i know how much you suffered for me lot of suffering we have gone through for Jesus and i, I know how you tolerate the uh, false prophets spain have fought with false prophets so many years and then god says but now i have a complaint against you you lost that first love you lost that first love get back that love so the entire you entire europe god have to say god is saying only one thing mm -hmm. get the same love back how your forefathers was here get back and uh, we all will pray for that and we will work for that that's all my ambition that, that's the reason i am here in uh, it's not i wish to come here but god send me to europe so there are so many prophets those who are coming to europe and there are so many prophets in europe so many saints in europe which we are not aware so all will be working and praying together definitely the changes will happen it's a good thing you see it like that huh cuéntanos
Can you tell us a little about what you do now, what type of apostolate you have, how you spend your time? Okay, uh, in the retreat center where I am staying, it's a Catholic retreat center. We have retreats in uh, uh, local language Malayalam, Tamil, Telugu, Kannada, Kongani, Hindi, and English. So I have talks every day in all the languages. So every day I am occupied, which means Monday to Friday, every day I am occupied uh, with uh, sharing the word of God and my witness to the thousands of people. Apart from that, when God sent me to other countries or other parts of India, I move around. So this is my present life, so serving for the Lord. In the beginning, you mentioned, you mentioned something about Our Lady. How was your relationship with her since you became Christian? How do you how do you relate with her? What do you think about the image of Our Lady? Do you see her as your mother, perhaps? With Mother Mary, mm -hmm. that's a nice question. You see, when I was very small, one day my, for my toes there was an infection, and my mama took me to a hospital, and the name of the hospital was Fatima Hospital, and Fatima is the name of Prophet Muhammad's daughter. But there was a lot of Catholic sisters and fathers. So I asked my mama, Mama, it's a name. Fatima is our name, no? Why this Christian keeps the name? Then my mother explained me about Fatima, uh, you know, the Spain, Portugal, Fatima, how the Mother Mary appeared and all. And then she explained me about Mother Mary. So from childhood onwards, I heard about Mother Mary and there was a liking for, you know, a love for me uh, towards Mother Mary. And then later on when I read the Quran, I understood what all my mama taught me is true. And later on when I came to Catholic Church, then again my faith became more deeper. And since I love Mother Mary, you know, when at the time of my baptism, uh, my spiritual father asked me what name you prefer. So my name was Suleiman ibn Ahmad in Islam. So all the fathers said, you keep Solomon. Solomon is Suleiman. I said, no, I love Mother Mary so much, so I need Mother Mary's name. And then they said, it's a lady's name, you are men. I said, we will find out some name. Then one of the priests who was from Italy, he said, Mario. So that's how I got the name Mario, Italian name, because I love Mother Mary. And then second name they asked what I said, if Mary is there, then let it be Joseph. So Mario Joseph. So, you know, I love, and I always ask the intercession of Mother Mary, and I know that she is protecting me wherever I am. When I go to Muslim world and when I am traveling, I know that she is protecting me so much. As our uh, John Paul II said, you know, uh, Mother Mary protects her children so much. So it's my experience. Okay, Mario Joseph, just to wrap things up, what would you like to say to the people who are watching this show? What would you say to them? Same thing, well, same thing I'm saying while I was praying for the Spanish people, I got a message from Bible that is from uh, Revelation chapter 2, verses 2, 3, 4. So come back to the same love which you have earlier towards the church, towards the cross, towards the heaven. So we must come back to the same position. That's all I will say. Thank you so much, Mario. Thank you for being here with us. Okay, may God bless. Thank you. You as well, Mario. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for sharing your testimony. Thank you for being willing to risk your life to bear witness to the truth, to Jesus Christ. And thank you for reminding us, friends, family, that we can call God Daddy. I like that a lot, that we can call God Daddy. And that the only nourishment that really sustains and fills us as Christians is the Eucharist, the Lord. This has been a truly impressive testimony. It's left all of us here speechless. It really is impressive. It's important to let Christ lead us, and we really have to give our lives for Jesus Christ, just like Mario Joseph is doing. Friends, be brave. I know I always say it, 